Hey guys, we're going to start a new little series here and you all have to let me know uh, past the three videos I have planned if you want to see more of this and if you do, put something in the comments below or you can um, email me uh, that my email address is in the description below. You can also post something in my Facebook group, group A Life of Art and Self-Expression. The links for all those things should be in the description below. This little series is prompted by some friends of mine who want to do some sewing, some mixed media style sewing. They don't know the first thing about sewing <laughs> and they're getting very frustrated. So I thought, okay, Sewing 101, we'll do that. The first video, this first video is going to be all about your machine. So what kind of machine you should pick or what kind of things you should think about when picking a machine and important tools, do's and don'ts, that sort of thing. All right, this is a Pfaff 1546. I've had this for quite a long time. It's a German sewing machine. I generally don't do this, use this um, for lots of mixed media. I usually use this for more dressmaking applications. I have a smaller, less expensive machine for sewing on paper. Uh, paper pulp can clog up your machine and cause some damage to it, so it's not always the best thing to do on a more expensive sewing machine, which this is. So if you want to just do like sewing on paper and that sort of thing, don't spend a ton of money. I would not advise spending a ton of money on your sewing machine or if you already have one using your expensive machine. You can go do it. You have a lot of choices. Now I bought a, Geno a little small Janome. It was less than $100 and that's the one that I use for sewing on paper. For that application it works fine. I don't expect a lot out of it. It only has like straight and zigzag stitches and <laughs> it doesn't do anything else. There's no automatic anything and very limited tension adjustments and all of that. So, But it, but for what I use it for it works fine. This one is has more stuff so and you can get ones that have a lot more stuff on them that are a lot more complicated. You can get sewing, um, sewing machines of course for mixed media and paper applications inexpensively on sale. Um, I recommend going to your thrift store, garage sales, that kind of a thing and picking up your machine that way. The most expensive piece of equipment with your machine besides the machine itself that you're going to need the owner's manual. So if you've bought a used machine and it does not have the owner's manual, I do recommend going to the manufacturer's website, whatever your manufacturer of your machine is, and seeing if they have a copy that they can download. Lots of the manufacturers have them this day, this day and age where you can download them as, as a PDF file. Um, some of them, like Singer and some of the other big companies who have been around a long, long time, it may actually have old copies of the manual that you can actually get a paper copy if you call them. Um, so you might look at that. If you can't find the copy online as a download, then definitely I would call. But you're going to need the owner's manual. So one of the most important things about sewing is reading said owner's manual. <laughs> this owner's manual will tell you the proper way to thread your machine, thread um, the upper part and the lower part, the bobbin, It'll tell you how to set your different stitches. It'll also, a lot of them will give you basic sewing instructions for like how to sew a zipper foot, how to um, do a reverse stitch, how to do a, mine does a stretch stitch. So if you have fancy stitches, the owner's manual will tell you how to do, how to use those properly and what the tension settings should be for using those. So this is an invaluable tool for your sewing machine. Many of them also have, um, troubleshooting guide and maintenance in the back. Um, this, it, when you run into a problem, this is something you really, really need and it usually has something in here in the, um, yeah, in the owner's manual about cleaning. I skipped right by it, so let's find it here. There we go, cleaning and oiling. So especially if you've bought a used machine or you've had your machine in storage for a while, maybe you inherited one from your mom or your grandmother, I would recommend spending some time with it and figuring out for each machine's a little different, but figuring out for your machine how it needs to be cleaned and oiled. If you're not sure, take it to a local sewing machine repair 
and spend the $20, $40, $50, it usually isn't more than that, um, to have a basic service done and have them clean and oil your machine properly. This should be done periodically over the life of the machine anyway to keep it in proper working order. You wouldn't drive your car for five years with never changing the oil, so you shouldn't do that with your sewing machine either. Um, the, the motor and everything is going to run much better if you maintain your machine. So this is invaluable. There's no shortcut to this part. You have to read the manual. <laughs> There's no shortcut. If there was a shortcut, I'd tell you. You know that. Okay. Usually your machine will come with at least one um, sort of a brush like this um, that I use for um, cleaning out the lint. Uh, let's see. This is where, in my machine, this is where the bobbin thread is down here and um, the upper thread is up here. Um, I always use my brush to clean this out and get the big chunks of fuzz and dust out of there. But I also pop this up. And not all machines you have to do this. Some you do, some you don't. Again, read the owner's manual. There we go. We're gonna, we're gonna take this out anyway because I'm gonna show you uh, some things. There we go. There we go. So the other thing I do is get in here with the brush and make sure there's no big pieces. Yeah, there was one. Pieces of lint stuck up here on top underneath the needle that I don't know about. And let's take the thread out completely because I want to show you some things about threading the machine. So there's usually some lint stuck up here underneath the um, plate that's underneath the presser foot. That's what this part's called. My old machine also had a door here that flipped open and I could see the gears inside and I could brush all of them off and get the dust off of them. This one doesn't do this. Um, and like I said, every machine is different. So look that up for your machine. I'm going to put this back. And we're going to actually change the thread here anyway because I have to do some mending. Um, oops. So we might as well do that while we're here, right? Might as well change the thread. So I store all of my bobbins in this donut shaped contraption. Um, I used to do a lot of sewing. I was a dressmaker and um, yeah, so I these keep them. I have two of them. Every now and then they get hairy like this, and this just kind of makes me crazy, so. I could sit there and wind all my bobbins, but that would make me crazier. So giving them a little haircut works just fine. I do recommend if you're going to do sewing on fabric that you should keep a pair of scissors separate from your paper scissors. Paper dulls your scissors very quickly <clears throat> and you'll get very frustrated trying to cut fabric with dull paper cutting scissors. So keep a pair of scissors separate for just for fabric. Um, I've got a bobbin here that was almost empty. So in my for my machine, and again every machine is different, my bobbin goes here and there's a little peg it has to sit there all the way down on so I have to turn it until it sits there. For the mending project I have to do I need dark blue thread, which I had to go buy because I didn't own any. My thread goes here. Oops, let's turn it this way. There we go. This thing keeps the thread tight on the post that it's sitting on right here. So I need to have that on there. Now for my <clears throat> for my sewing machine the thread comes this way around here down here through the hole right here back down and through the needle yeah I'll show you
Now, for a lots of mixed media applications, I just have a large size um, denim needle on my sewing machine. It will sew through just about anything. Now, my machine has a needle threader, which I'm going to use because I totally do not even have my glasses on. Oops. I probably should put them on. So the needle threader pushes into the eye of the needle and grabs the thread and then it will pull it out easily and quickly like that. So if I was just going to, my bobbin was already round, wound and I was going to get, going to sew, that's how I would thread my machine. But we need to wind the bobbin. So we're going to put it through here, then it's going to go back this way towards the bobbin. I'm going to wind it a few times around the bobbin. I'm going to loosen up a gear here on the end so that my needle doesn't bounce up and down while I'm winding the bobbin. The needle will stay still. And I'm going to press down on my presser foot, my at the bottom underneath on the floor. Have to move it back that way. There we go. Now you notice I'm holding the thread. I'm putting more tension on the thread as it um, winds on the bobbin, just gentle pressure so that the bobbin winds nicely and evenly and there's no loose, lumpy, loopy bits on it because that will make your machine sew really poorly. Okay, cut this. I'm going to take this out, put it in my bobbin. Now, generally speaking, when you put, if you have a bobbin case on your machine, when you put your bobbin in and you hook your thread around the little bits that are in the bobbin case here, and you pull the thread gently, it should turn clock, clockwise. If it's turning counterclockwise, it's the wrong way. Again, look in your machine. So I'm going to put this back in and make sure it's in all the way and my threads hanging out. Now we're going to re-thread our machine. Got to make sure that, there we go, that we catch that little arm. There's some guides here to lead the thread down to the needle. Make sure I catch all of those. Okay. Pull the thread through the needle. There we go. Now, we need to catch that bobbin thread and bring it up to the top. So we're going to manually crank the needle all the way down and bring it all the way back up again. Then gently tug on your thread. Supposedly gently tug on your thread. There we go. And you'll get a loop here. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Oops, wrong way. <clears throat> There's a loop right here of the bobbin thread. So I'm going to pull that. And now both of my threads are up at the top. I'm going to push them all back that way. So they're between this little crack in the presser foot. They're down below here between the plate and the presser foot. And I've pulled them all the way back here. Now my, arm, my sewing machine is a free arm. What does that mean? It means this comes off. And I can do narrow tubes and things like sleeves. Um, we're not doing that today. That's more of a dressmaking thing. You guys don't need to do that. Worry about that. You're not going to probably ever do that. Okay. Um, now what? Now we're going to work on tension. I'm going to save this little thing that come, came off the thread because we'll use that maybe in the next video. Uh, if you need to oil your machine using the directions in the owner's manual, make sure you use machine oil. This is um, Singer machine oil. Um, go to your sewing machine store and get proper sewing machine oil. All right. So now when you go to do basic stitching, make sure you hold these threads back here. I don't care what anybody tells you, hold them. If you don't hold them, lots of times they'll bunch up and create a knot underneath and then no matter how far along you stitch you're just going to have this wad of knot knotted stitches underneath it's not good 
<clears throat> this should be a good tension for this um, fabric, but we're going to find out. Um, I do have it, I'm going to, right now it's set for a zigzag up here. Um, I don't want it to do a zigzag. This dial here on my machine tells the needle how far right and left to go. I don't want it to go anywhere, so I'm going to set it to zero. This dial tells the needle if I want it to stay in the middle or if I want it to sew a straight line to the left or a straight line to the right, we're going to leave it in the middle. Um, I have a, a dial down here. Let's see. We need to go out just a little bit. There we go. A dial down here that tells the machine how long of stitches to make. So I want it to be the lower the number, the shorter the stitch. So I, for most sewing, you want something between, a th on my machine, something between a three and a four. <clears throat> so now we're going to hold our threads and we're going to uh, push down on the presser foot. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to show you. It's a good thing I'm vacuuming today. There's going to be thread all over the floor. So what do I mean by pretty good? So it's nice and even and there's no puckers or lumps or bumps on the back side of the stitches, neither on the front. There are usually two ways to adjust the tension on your machine. One is by adjusting a little screw on your bobbin case if you have a bobbin case. The other one is this dial right here. I'm going to purposefully mess up my tension so that you can see what happens when it's wrong. So I'm going to put it to 9. Actually, I'm going to make it loose. So I'm going to put it down to 5. Actually, it's not bad. We need to really mess it up, so let's do it. Yeah, that's better. So you'll start to notice when your tension is messed up that the stitches are uneven and you'll get loops on the back. That's the tension. And there's no short, again, no shortcut to fixing it except for adjusting this dial a little bit at a time until you get it to where it is stitching straight and even without any lumps or um, knots or loops on either side of the fabric. Now the other thing I got asked is how to lock your stitches and keep them from uh, coming out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> Alright, so sew a few stitches. Figure out where the reverse button is on your machine. Every machine has one. Mine is right here, so I'm going to push down. And then I'm going to lift it up. So it just went back and forth. That locks your stitches in. So they're not going to come out. Now, the, uh, there is another way to do it. So the other way to do it is to take your thread from the bottom or the top, pull it until you get the loop of the thread from the other side coming up and then pull that end out so both cut ends are on the same side and then tie them in a knot and then cut them off. The easier way is to just go back and forth and that locks them in. I think that's it for the first part. So think about practicing with your machine, read your manual, uh, make sure you know how everything works. Don't worry about if your machine has fancy stitches, don't worry about them right now. Just work with your straight stitch and figure out how to adjust your tension. You may want to, if it's stitching, fi if it's stitching fine, you may want to purposefully uh, play with this dial and just mess it up so that you know what to expect if the tension is wrong. Yes? So, in the next video, we will be back with making a simple, easy pencil bag. Don't be scared. <laughs> uh, all straight stitches, nothing fancy, not even any turning of fabric right side out or anything. So, trust me on that. Don't forget the most important thing. Have fun. Play. Yes. All right. And do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later.